Even though I enjoyed Void Titan more for general content, Silla Titan is surprisingly great at its job as well, and can put in the same effect and damage when you get a smart build together. Which brings us to today's video, Consecration. When it was first released, it gave Titans a new way to cause a large serial damage via melee, and it still is great when you combine it with Ignitions with them. However, we can do better than that by applying Synthoset for even more damage stacking as we go. Have you ever wanted to one-shot a champion or two in a single Consecration? Well, your chance to do so is now, and let me tell you, this setup will allow you to repeat this madness as many times as you like without the need of melee-based exotics. You can get some crazy damage numbers when you flex your muscles, and I'm going to show you how to achieve just that. But you know who else likes to flex their muscles? This channel right here. So if you enjoyed the video, then do leave a like, a sub, and turn on your notifications for more stuff like this in the future, as it goes a long way for me. So last time we made a build around Consecration, we used Lorely for the quick Sunspot activation, and allowing us to last longer in a number of fights. That setup worked great for endgame as we could avoid dying with his restoration effect and also avoid needing to use healing based mods to sustain ourselves for longer. Now though we will be focusing more on damage and using this opportunity to burn through everything in our way in one shot. We will still be careful because of the vulnerability with the build but we do have less to worry about. So for this I have the following aspects and fragments. I have Consecration that allows us to do a slide solar attack that launches a wave of solar and then can generate a slam to cause a bigger wave and ignite. We then have Roaring Flames which increases our solar ability's damage up to 3 stacks. For Fragments, we then have Ember of Char where your solar ignition spreads Scorch to affect the targets, Ember of Searing where defeating Scorched targets grants melee energy, Ember of Torches where powered melee attacks against combatants make you and allies radiant, and Embers of Ashes where you apply more Scorch stats to targets. For stats, we have 80 resilience, 90 in discipline, 80 in strength. For mods, we have melee wellmaker for creating elemental wells via melee, well of life for increased health regen via elemental wells, taking charge for becoming charged with light, radiant light for plus 20 in strength and additional bonuses, and heavy handed while being charged with light, you can gain half your melee energy back when using your charged melee. Now, heavy handed is an important mod here as this will not only allow you to get half your melee energy back from using your ability, but it will overall allow you to spam your abilities much faster compared to not having it attached. You can use other melee mods or Monte Carlo to help get you to the spot you need quickly, but this setup allows you to avoid that and be more flexible in weapons being used. You don't need a lot to make this work, but alternatives are there in case you don't have heavy handed mod to fulfill your needs. For weapons, it will vary from content to content, so you do not need a must have to make the setup work. Although, having Monte Carlo or weapon with Pugilis can help. Primary wise, we have Deliverance Fusion Rifle with Surrounded and Demolitioners, which is great for hitting mages to ultras and weakening them before diving in with your melee. I have another version with Chill Clip, which will be more better suited for freezing ultras and allow you to fully commit to your melee without miss. But this time, I want to try something different. A demo is going to help with getting grenade energy back quickly and getting our warm flames going while Surrounded allows us to get our weapon buff while Surrounded. A perfect combination for a build that uses close quarter fighting to maximize its overall damage. For secondary, I have the Ogma PR6 Pulse with adaptive munitions and Wellspring, and this is another great weapon to have in hand if you ever want to play endgame content and be effective against all shield types. Not a bad weapon, and fires pretty well against minor to major combatants, this is more of an endgame weapon that fits the build and benefits the user when creating orbs of power. I can see this weapon being a problem for those that want to synergize the build more over what they currently have. So, Callus Mini Tool with Unrelenting Incandescent is another perfect weapon for the build as it fits the close quarter style of fighting. You can also use Incandescent to build up Scorch damage on targets fairly well and make it much easier to ignite targets far and wide. For Heavy, we have the Galahorn for its immense damage and large destructive capabilities that fit well for the Solar Titan setup. You can go anywhere with the heavy, as most damage is coming from your melee and super in general, so going with something that matches that level of destruction is up to you. For the stats, we want to have 3 main key areas covered, so we can have good damage reduction, fast grenades and even faster melee regen speed. This means resilience, discipline and strength will need to be the key focus of today's setup. If you can't reach the levels I have, then it's no biggie, as we can rely on mods to enhance them further and the number of mods used won't be too impossible to get for some. 
for starters, resilience should be at 70 to 100, so you can maximize on your damage reduction while in and out of action. This should be fairly easy to achieve, as there are many ways of getting high stat armor pieces just from playing the game like normal. If you have the space, you could add in the Warman Protection mod for a plus 50 damage reduction from those within this radius. And this here will allow you to use your abilities more often and much safer without the need to further escalation. Discipline, being at 90 is ideal here, but can be reduced to 70 depending on which Elemental one mod you'll be using. If you plan to use Elemental Ordnance to produce wells, then stick with 90 and buff, but if you plan to use Melee Wellmaker instead, then 70 is perfectly fine to match with. To be quite honest, this stat doesn't need to be so high unless you plan to use it to kickstart your Warm Flames and stack ability damage as quickly as possible. This is what I tend to do so that my Consecration effect is not only deadly, but near guaranteed it will one-shot Ultras and Champions when everything's at play. You of course don't need to follow that as having a Throne Hammer is enough to quickly build up stacks, but you get the idea as to why the stat is important and what you can do further with it. The strength now is at 80, and although this can be reduced down to 60 if you take off the radio light mod, I have left it on like this so I can regen my melee speed at a passive means, while also using heavy handed at my fullest. With heavy handed, allowing my titan to get half his power melee back so quickly, I can see a number of people reducing the stat to 60 and use an alternative to keep the build afloat, such as the Pugless Perk. I want to play it safe and not rely on weapon perks to achieve my goal, so 80 to 100 is a good area to focus on. And then you want to add on Invigoration for reduced melee cooldown upon collecting orbs of power, Outreach for reduced melee cooldown via class ability use, and last thing, Harmonic Siphon so you can produce a orb of power via matching elemental gear. This is all you will need to keep the build moving, and like I said, this can be reduced if you don't have the key mods as shown. Now, this leads us with the leftover mods, which is Rocket Scavenger mod, for bonus reserves when picking up heavy. And that's it. So, let's go ahead and compile everything that we have learned so far. For head, we have strength, harmonic siphon times 2, and melee wallmaker mod. Arm, we have strength and well of life mod. Chest, we have resilience, thermal shot plating, because of dampener, and taking charge mod. Leg with minor resilience, rocket scavenger, innovation, and radio light mod. Mark, we have minor strength. Outreach and Heavy Handed mod. Incredibly powerful and useful in ad clearing a large wave of combatants, the following setup allows users to enhance the already powerful Consecration effect and make the overall damage a one shot against champions, ultras, and even some bosses. With this, you can scorch a target on the initial hit and then trigger a ignition for a larger, more powerful blast, which is capable of taking anyone out if hit by the secondary wave. The damage you will pull is capable of one-shotting all champions, not just one, as long as you stun them and get your solar effect buffs going. Now, this on its own without buffs is fine if you don't use it against massive combatants, as match game shields and aggressiveness can cause the user to fall short on their aim. However, once you add in Synthoseps damage increasement, we can get a 200% melee buff as long as we have more than 3 combatants surrounding us, and the vast amount of content we play, you then have Scorch and Ignition effects damage, and Warm Flames ability enhancement for another whopping damage boost. So this simple build can wipe out a room of champions in one single blast, if you have them lined up and knock them down at the right time. And this to me makes it perfect for endgame to mass a loadout if you wish to take out much tougher combatants quickly. For the sake of keeping the build running perfectly, you will need to have the heavy handed mod so you can get 50% melee back upon using it and you will need to have a high strength stat even though we have this mod available. I know not a lot of people will have the following mod and I can understand the annoyance of this, which is why, like I mentioned earlier, alternatively getting a weapon with the apocalypse perk can help keep you afloat and quickly get your minis back even without the heavy handed mod available. I will also mention that as this setup requires you to be in the open to pull it off, you will be vulnerable mid action and on master content, this can and will lead to problems. So make sure, before you act, you have a barricade available to protect you or the World of Life mod so you can regen health mid-action. Trust me on this, this setup is really fun to play with and I really enjoy how dummy powerful it is against champions of all tiers, but you are vulnerable mid-action and if you want to survive, you've got to prepare yourself. So enjoy! So if you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like and a sub and also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny content if you like that type of stuff. Link is down below. 
Once again, thank you for stopping by. Stay safe, and I'll see you all next one.